Football is back. The Blue Jays are gunning for a playoff spot, and the NHL season is around the corner. And how do you know? It's because we're back. Yeah. Woo! We're here. Uh, all the action starts at Sports Interaction. It's Canada's Sportsbook. Uh, bet before the game, live and in play, or on one of the many prop bets. They've been doing it right since 1997. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now to see all sports betting has to offer. Head on over to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. I want to include you guys in the ad. I realized I was sort of taking all the script. And Thanks. Sorry Thanks, about Dad. that. The Burns trade was very odd because it happened on the same day that the Patches trade happened. But like we didn't get the official uh, announcement until like the, we were off. The yeah, it was air, weird like, until August. So yeah. it was a month later. later. I think they were trying to figure out what because here's the weird part: the Sharks are retaining thirty four percent of Brent Burns' contract. That's a very specific amount. So I think that they were working out the math. Yeah, there was a whole mm-hmm. bunch of stuff getting done because like yeah, it was a f- couple weeks later. So what is Brent Burns now? Uh, a still a huge defenseman who's. Not incredibly mobile um, or good at defense, really, but he's tough and he can still put up a ton of points. He's an interesting fit for Carolina Mm -hmm. um, who do like to move the puck. It's it's weird. I feel like Carolina is all about Brent Burns strengths and can cover his weaknesses. I think they can cover his weaknesses, but his weaknesses make him a strange match for them. I think that'll be a fascinating conversation between Carolina Hurricanes management and Rod Brindamore and the coaching staff. Why do you say that? Well, just how they use him is so important. I think how Brent Burns is used, if you use him properly, you're winning the division. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because you got the goaltending, uh, you have the personnel to shelter him, Mm -hmm. you have great scoring players. Your trade deadline acquisition is going to be Max Pacioretty. Yeah. Uh, because he's out, I think, six months. Yep. Surgery. So your trade deadline acquisition is a guy who is one of the most underrated goal scorers in the league last year, frankly. It's just he didn't play very much. Um, you just got to be careful with a guy who's kind of up there. Well, and and here he's 37. He's still got this year, next year, and the year after. He makes 20 grand less than Oof. Slavin. Um... And, and that's with retention. That's with retention. Yikes. I didn't realize the contract was so long. It is a long Still contract. Th- he's got till he's 40. Dude, the Sharks have some nightmare deals, and his was one of them, even though he's good. You're never going to get out of the Vlasic deal, so you got to move the other ones. Ah. Who does I Adam Wilde do hate more? Uh, Dominic Ducharme or Eric Carlson, who uh, got upset that one time about winning? I don't hate Eric Carlson. <laughs> I don't hate. I actually, you know what I, I dislike the most on the Sharks is there is Vlasic's contract. It's the worst. I uh, it, it, They signed that when he was 32. S- Sens fans, by the way, I'm talking to you again. Um, Sens fans have been asking me off the hook for the Eric Carlson trade tree. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to do that. I do, but it's too young. It's too early. Dude, that is, a, I, I don't remember exactly what the Sens got, but I know they got the Stutzla pick and they got Josh Norris. Bing bang. That's like they're two highest paid players besides Brady. Who cares what else you got? Like you, you should won. do that trade tree in like 20 years. Like those guys are career NHLers. They're going to be around. Hey everyone, who <laughs> wants to see the most unexpectedly bad trade in NHL history? Like that trade's awful. Yeah. Holy shit. Do you think that the Sharks are ever going to be able to move out Eric Carlson or Mark Edward Vlasic? No. No. So whether or not Eric Carlson wants to win, it's really besides the point because his contract won't let him. At least, or he's got to sit through the rebuild until they, they can't. I, didn't he have sort of a bounce back season? I yeah, no, but it doesn't mean he's not good. Um, that's not what I'm saying. He's the highest paid defenseman in the league, isn't he? Yes. 11.5. And, that, and my, point is, my point is, you're not moving that. It's so funny at that... At least until 2025. We got onto this conversation because he spoke to The Athletic today about this very issue. Oh, he did? Yeah. Uh, what did he say? So, Carlson confirmed to The Athletic that he has not requested a trade and added he's hopeful for the future of the team under new general manager, Mike Greer. No, Carlson said. I committed here a long time ago. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to early on. There's a lot of things that probably played into that. I'm not going to get into details about that. But I am excited for the future here now. 
I hope we can move in the direction to be successful again. Is that going to be this year? I mean, who knows? But I do think something good can come out of here. For the record, the first year Carlson was in San Jose, they made it to the conference final and lost to the team who ended up winning the cup in the St. Louis Blues. This dude was so fucking good. 2017 playoffs. Oh, He had 18 points in 19 playoff games with a broken foot. Oh. And then the Suns missed the playoffs, and they weren't very good, but he still had 62 points. And then with the Sharks, 16 points in 19 playoff games. He was so, so, so good. And last year, he still had 35 points in 50 games. It's really good. The dude can, like, he and Brent Burns... You didn't need them together. Some No, you didn't. But they're somewhat similar in that both can still move the puck. Both can still put up a ton of points. Both are still right-handed, which matters. Um, but defensively are a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it's just, it seemed like it was difficult for Carolina to make the Brent Burns trade work. And it's going to be even harder to make Carlson work. He makes 11.5. I think you're not moving that until 2025. Uh, it's possible, but holy shit, he makes that's a lot. It's a lot. He uh, he also went on to talk about because they asked him, okay, so you got a new head coach. Do you see yourself getting a career resurgence? And his answer was no. He said, not really. Maybe if I was younger, it may be a little different. I've played for a lot of different coaches. I am who I am at this point. So I, I agree with him on that. Yeah, I, I can see he, that. It's it's a very realistic view of his abilities at this point with all the injuries he's gone through. I was about so to I commend say him for that. I was about to say he scored at a 57 point pace last year, which is wild for a defenseman that, but that is if he played 82 games mm-hmm. and I think he's done doing that. He can't hard miles, man. Like yeah. really? Well, and, and it's, it's whether or not he can pivot now a couple of years ago, he couldn't pivot on that one foot. He couldn't turn left. Yeah. That I think it was Pete Blackburn. That there, tweet was, he had a tweet of one particular goal and it's just like, I remember this, it. This guy's cooked. Yeah. But, but that not, was years ago, and he still had a good no. He's, ish he's season. It's just it's it depends on what you need him for, mm-hmm. right? What age is that uh, when he? What age is Carlson when the contract expires? Uh, that is a good question, Jesse. Is that a trivia question? So he's got <laughs> this year, the year after, the year after, the year after, the year after. One, two, three, four, five years left. Full no move. And how old is he now? Uh, old enough. Twenty six, twenty seven. Is when that deal expires. He's, he's thirty-two. <laughs> he'll be he'll be Brent Burns' age. And I was trying to look for a, a path to a trade with the money that he makes, but that is also a nightmare. So this year, he has a two million dollar base salary and a ten million dollar <laughs> signing bonus. I think. Holy shit! I think it's unfair. I, I think if we're going to give Doug Wilson some credit here, because he's the one that signed the contract, I realize he's not the GM there anymore. He, like everybody else, thought that the the um, a pandemic was likely not to happen. Oh, like, like for that Cabot? was signed before that, right? So you know, like yeah. a lot of some of these contracts, people are like what a, what a nightmare. What was he fucking thinking? Like you know, no, I think everybody expected that the cap would be hovering right now around ninety million dollars, and then that's not thirteen percent of your cap; it's eleven percent, and then mm-hmm. each year it goes down a little bit more. Little you also more. you also got to give credit to any GM that goes for it. And signing the did. signing the Burns, uh, Vlasic, Carlson deals is a team that's really is like this is our window. We're trying to do it, and the, and the Sharks got so damn close, and we're not looking at it like this. If they just win a thing, most people take for granted. Adam Adam's got a great point here. Most people do not. Uh, <laughs> prior to March 2020, most people do not. Uh, run their lives and conduct themselves like the world is about to stop. And that's, that's why I think you're seeing bigger and more desperate moves and screw it. There is no tomorrow. (laughs) And I mean, the coyotes are like, that's great that you think there's no tomorrow. Give us all of tomorrow. Yes. Like they, they, they might come out of it really, really strong. Oh, they will. Um, but I mean, Carlson, we knew two things about him when that contract was signed. He's one of the best defensemen in the world. Mm-hmm. he's going to deteriorate. It's probably not going to happen as fast as it actually happened. Yeah. And, you know, so you think bodies you do th- recover. Okay, but so you think that the, 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 the quick de- quicker deterioration we've seen the last couple of years will flatten out? I think he's already on the come up. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he really struggled for a while. Like, the, uh, uh, we, we get to watch a lot of highlights 
uh, when it comes to like hat picks and dang it's and fuck he was awful just awful now should you be playing the highest paid defenseman in the league in a sheltered role no uh if ifs and buts were candy nuts would we all have a merry christmas yes uh neither of those i've never understood that saying and you're the only one i've ever heard say it but i like it really yeah oh i don't get it i don't i don't get it and i don't know where i got it but anyway um there's there's a path to carlson being I think Carlson is a, a good contributor for the Sharks. At 33 it, points in 50 games, I guess. He's, yeah. He's ridiculously overpaid, but there is a... I think there is some clever coaching that could happen there that could lead to him being mm-hmm. an elite player again. Well, and and I, I like to think that some of these newer GMs are are smarter than the old, especially with the cap being 20 years old coming up here. We're coming up on 20 years of NHL cap. And and I think that the the education around it's far better. And you look at like, um, you look at some of the cap issues they have. I think Vlasic is their biggest problem. They got to move that deal. Um, but you can get creative. Like if Bill Guerin with fifteen million dollars tied behind his back in cap space that's been taken up for those buyouts for the next three years, if he expects to be, mm-hmm. um, if he expects to be a contender or at least com- competitive, get into the playoffs, he's got to be creative. We'll see how good Bill, Bill Guerin is. And I think we'll see how good Mike Greer is. And by the way, um, I, going back to your point about you got to respect a team that goes for it. Any, any Leaf fan, oh, Jesse, okay. Any Leaf fan would, no, would trade, <laughs> would, I, just to see the Leafs in the Stanley Cup Finals, which the San Jose Sharks got to and won a couple games. 2016. You know? like yeah, what pre-Carlson, would you, I but would, still. I would, trade, I would trade whatever for the last 10 years that they've had. Mm-hmm. Mm. There are issues. These are good problems to have. These are problems that you have after the the good times Man, are kind of over. They got close a few times. They though. sure did. Yeah. Boy, they were good. They got close a few times over a number of years. Like yes. they got close with like Nabokov. Like yeah, <laughs> it's torture, <laughs> torture. Quick trivia. Mm. Let's do it. Uh, we've established that Eric Carlson makes eleven point five million dollars as a defenseman. Name the second highest de- defenseman in the NHL. Mm. <laughs> the only other defenseman to make double digits. Not Petrangelo. Oh, it's Drew Doughty. Oh, yeah. Drew Doughty, $11 million. Can you name the third highest defenseman? Not Petrangelo. Also double digits or no? They are the only two defensemen that make right, double digits. Right, you just said that. Sorry. So it's not Petrangelo? It's, it I want to say... You're incorrect. I want to say there's two defensemen who make 9.5. McAvoy. Or no, who's the one above Boston side? Yeah, there's McAvoy, who I think makes nine. Okay, so he's not it then. McCarr, I think, makes nine. Which he should. And I want to say Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski both make 9.5. Yes! Put your, put your brains together and deliver me one name of the defenseman who is the third highest paid defenseman Wierenski. in the NHL. Wierenski makes 9.5 for sure. Yeah. So Seth Jones Zach has got to be, I, think, I thought Seth Jones was nine. Wierenski. You have delivered the correct answer! Yeah!